Web scraping legality, a much debated topic among developers and businesses that will probably never lose its relevance. Today, we invited Victoria Lapinite, Head of Product Legal Counsel at Oxilabs, to answer some of the most common questions related to the legal aspect of web scraping, as well as discuss the most prominent cases that set the tone for future scraping legal claims. Before we start our discussion, it's important to note that this interview is conducted for educational purposes only. So, despite any information we'll talk about today, we recommend receiving professional legal advice regarding your specific situation. And now, we can finally get started. Hello, Victoria. Obviously, the first thing I would like to ask you is if you could tell me a little bit more about yourself and your team's work. Hi, Lisa. Sure. Uh, I joined Oxlabs around uh, about two and a half years ago. Uh, I've been in tech law for quite a while now, but covering uh, different areas. But I found web scraping uh, very unique, uh, challenging, and very interesting from a legal perspective. So I guess that's why I'm here. And today, uh, me and my team are covering all the questions related to Oxlabs product, like ensuring compliance of existing and upcoming projects and, pro and uh, products. Uh, we're also helping our colleagues with any legal questions that they may have. Uh, we're covering uh, privacy matters as well. And of course, uh, we closely follow and analyze all the new regulations and case law. As in this industry, it's essential to stay ahead uh, of the game uh, with all the latest developments. So yeah, basically this is what we do day, day to day. Great, so jumping right into today's topic. As I see at this point in the conversation surrounding web scraping legality, it's clear that web scraping, it's not illegal as such. It's more about what you scrape, how you scrape, and what you do with the data you scrape. So the question is, what are some specific things that one has to look into that might put them at risk of making web scraping illegal? Yeah, you actually have made some great points. And you know, it's like driving a car. Driving itself, it's perfectly legal, but only as long as you're following all the rules and signs on the road. The difference is that while driving a car has a straightforward and direct regulation, web scraping doesn't have one. But it doesn't mean that the scraping is unregulated or like a gray area of law, because it's not. It's it's quite colorful actually, because it has a lot of indirect regulations like privacy laws, copyright laws, uh, contract laws and others. So the same as in any other industry, uh, web scraping has its own boundaries and limitations. And it's usually connected with few questions, few ma main questions. First one is, are you scraping publicly available data or data under the login? Have you accepted terms of service of a web page? Because if you do, if you do click this I accept button uh, or the tick box, then it could be uh, the click wrap agreement. And then it means that you need to actually read them and follow them. Also, it always depends on what kind of data you're scraping. Are you scraping maybe copyrightable material like books, uh, articles, videos? Uh, which could be protected by copyright laws. Maybe you're scraping personal data, which could be protected by GDPR or California CCPA. It's like uh, name, surname, or anything uh, identifying the person itself. Maybe you're scraping a database, which has its own regulation. Uh, Lastly, are you conducting scraping for the commercial purposes or not? So, as you can see, the legality of scraping really lies in the details. So, every detail is matter here. So, since there are so many different things you have to take into consideration, wouldn't it be more effective to have one specific law dictating the rules for web scraping and why there is no such law nowadays? Yeah, uh, I would love that actually, but I don't think we will see that happening anytime soon. And the reason is that we have quite a lot of different regulations and to put like everything uh, in one regulation that would cover all the aspects would be quite challenging, if not impossible. Also, uh, regulations are different depending on the jurisdiction, on the location, so it's not making it easier as well. And of course, let's not forget that web scraping is a relatively new area. 
So it often takes time for a lot to catch up with the technological advancements. But since it would probably be hard for, let's say, someone who is just starting their web scraping journey to remember and correctly understand all the privacy laws and other legal aspects, would you be willing to share some basic tips and advice everyone should follow based on your professional knowledge? Yeah, sure. Uh, first tip from me would be always seek legal advice from legal professional before engaging in any type of scraping because each case is so different. Uh, but speaking generally, of course, uh, there are several points. First one, always make sure you're scraping uh, only publicly available data. Uh, Always evaluate what kind of data you're scraping. Do you really need this copyrighted data? Do you really need this personal uh, personal data? R always respect the website itself and make sure your actions does not bring any harm to the website. And last but not least, uh, always make sure that you're using proxies which are ethically sourced because this one is also counts. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about web scraping best practices, check out our web scraping tips and tricks video available on our channel. Also, learn more about ethical web data collection in our blog post. You can find all the relevant links in the video description below. Now that we've talked about web scraping in general, I think it's worth discussing actual web scraping legal cases and uh, discussing their role in shaping the future of web scraping landscape. I believe that everyone who is related to or works in the data collection industry is aware of the widely discussed case between Haiku Labs and LinkedIn. Uh, could you quickly summarize the whole legal issue? Uh, are there any recent developments or was any specific decision reached by the court? Yeah, of course. Uh... It was actually the biggest and one of the most important cases in the scraping industry. And it started in 2017. And the main question was whether Haiku Labs is in breach of uh, US anti-hacking law named CFA. And uh, the court, by scraping LinkedIn, and the court said that uh, scraping is not the same as hacking. And that was a big win for all scraping community. Uh, but actually, uh, it doesn't mean that now all scraping, any kind of scraping is legal, but it was connected with the CFAA, this one law, and now it's out of question when speaking about publicly available data. Uh, the last year, uh, we had one more ruling and it was kind of um, confusing uh, a bit because it was, the question raised was a little different. It was about uh, creating uh, fake accounts uh, and scraping LinkedIn. So creating fake accounts is not the same as scraping publicly available data. And the case was closed with settlement between parties, but it actually raised the question about breach of contract. And I would say breach of contract now is like a new trend in courts. So always make sure you're, you're scraping publicly available data. Always make sure you're not accepting terms. And if you do, uh, you have to actually read them and follow them. Taking a look at all the different legal cases that you encounter in your professional career every day, how do you evaluate their influence on the web scraping landscape in general? Can, for instance, one specific case completely shift how businesses see web scraping? Yeah, you know, in industries where there are no specific, like one dedicated regulation, uh, following uh, all the court cases is, is essential and, and crucial. But I don't think uh, one case will uh, shift how all uh, businesses in every jurisdiction sees that scraping, but it can definitely pr play a role and shape a little bit the interpretation of, of the law for sure. But of course, it will always depends on the jurisdiction, uh, on the location, on w what type of court it is, and what are the details of the case itself. So legal cases are something that every business in this industry is following and should be following very closely. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Victoria, for your professional input. I hope you enjoyed our 
short conversation on the topic of web scraping legality and received some useful insights that you can utilize in your scraping activities. We also have an article, Is Web Scraping Legal?, in our blog, so in case you're interested, check out the link in the video description below. As usual, if you have any questions about this or any other scraping-related topic, don't hesitate to reach out to us at hello at oxylabs.io. Subscribe and follow our channel for more educational content. Thank you for watching and see you soon!